In this video, we're gonna talk about the foundations of body language. To do this, I'm gonna teach you the four pillars of body language. These are gonna help us understand how nonverbal communication works throughout the course. So let's dive right in. As an entrepreneur, when you think about pitching a client or explaining your profession to someone at a networking event, you most likely just think about the words you say. You script out your elevator pitch or you list all the benefits for a potential client. But what if I told you what you say is not nearly as important as how you say it? Up to 93% of our communication is nonverbal. 93%, that's amazing. That means only 7% of our communication is the words we say. The rest is through our voice tone, facial expressions, and body language. When I first saw those stats, I couldn't believe I was never taught this. We certainly weren't taught body language in school. So we often forget about our nonverbal. For example, let's say you're about to go into an important pitch with a potential client or investor. You probably prepare your presentation, think through possible questions, and research the person you are pitching. But do you think about your nonverbal cues, your stance, your voice tone, your facial expressions? We are trained to think about what we say, but we rarely think about how we want to say something. This means we are only preparing 7% of our presentation. We have 93% that we aren't taking advantage of. No wonder we don't know why we didn't get the client, or why the negotiation went poorly, or why we didn't get a good review. Body language is this hidden ingredient that we aren't paying attention to. And this leads me to my body language pillar number two. I figured out how powerful body language is while digging through the history of body language. Yes, I am a total nerd. I love history. And I stumbled upon the story of the Nixon-Kennedy presidential debate. This was the first debate in U.S. history that was televised. And interestingly, not everyone had televisions in their homes. So part of the population watched the debate on TV, and part of the population listened to the debate on the radio. So it was the perfect test to see if nonverbal behavior actually mattered. Amazingly, the debate divided the country. Everyone who watched the debate was sure that Kennedy won, and everyone who listened to the debate was sure that Nixon won. It was the first time in history there was a huge discrepancy, and it all had to do with nonverbal. Let's watch the first part of the debate together to see if we can figure out why their nonverbals were so powerful. In this video, I'm going to play you the first few seconds of the Nixon-Kennedy presidential debate. I want you to sort of pay attention to how the nonverbal cues, before any questions are asked or answered, you can already get a solid first impression of both of the candidates. So, so just watch the first 20 seconds of the debate. Good evening. The television and radio stations of the United States and their affiliated stations are proud to provide facilities for a discussion of issues in the current political campaign by the two major candidates for the presidency. The candidates need no introduction. The Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon, and the Democratic candidate, Senator John F. Kennedy. Now I'm going to go into detail about some of these cues in the course, but I want to break down a few things right away just so you can see how powerful nonverbal is. Before the debates even start, Nixon sends off five different negative nonverbal cues to the audience. First, he looks over towards Kennedy before he's introduced, and this breeds distrust with the audience because they can't see Nixon's eyes. Second, it's also a non-alpha behavior. Typically, non-alphas look towards the alpha. It also draws our attention over to Kennedy. So that's a very bad sign that, that Nixon's almost kowtowing or, or being submissive to Kennedy because he's looking over at him. Third, he's gripping his chair arm, and that is a sign of nervousness, right? When you grip the chair arm for stability, it's a very weak sign for the audience. Fourth, unfortunately, while he's gripping that chair arm, it makes his hand look like a fist. And anytime someone sees a clenched fist, it's a nonverbal sign of aggression. So he gives off nervous signs and aggressive signs. Fifth, he's in what's called the runner stance, where he has one leg partially tucked under the chair. This gesture alone has two different effects. First, the runner stance usually means that someone wants to leave. So it shows someone's desire to exit or flee. Second, it's a hiding gesture. When we tuck part of our body under a chair, it's self-protective. So again, it looks very weak and submissive. 
So before Nixon is even introduced, he's given a f us five reasons not to vote for him. He looks anxious. He looks like he's mistrustful. He says the other person he's sitting with is the alpha, of course, non-verbally. He shows nervousness, aggressiveness, and that he really wants to leave. The nonverbal in this debate was so powerful that it cost Nixon the election. Even the voting polls revealed that more than half of all voters said it was the debates that influenced their choice. Nixon himself even admitted in his memoir the importance of his nonverbal. He said, I should have remembered that a picture is worth a thousand words. By the way, if you ask me, I would add on to that phrase. If a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a million. And person to person is priceless. In fact, this body language moment in history was so powerful that the next televised presidential debate wouldn't take place for 16 years. And this is largely because the candidates became scared of their nonverbal influence. Lyndon B. Johnson was too intimidated and Nixon, having been burned before, refused to debate on TV in both 1968 and 1972. That is some crazy powerful stuff, that body language could change a presidential election, and that some of the smartest men in the country, the men running for president, were so scared of nonverbal behavior that they actually gave up screen time with voters. That's amazing. What we have to remember about the Nixon-Kennedy story is that unsuccessful body language can make you lose, but successful body language can make you win. In business, wins are essential for success. Winning the customer, winning the project, winning the client, and projecting that winning mentality with your nonverbal. And this leads me to my third pillar of body language. The best way for you to see the winning power of body language is actually through a really fascinating study. And you will have to forgive me because I am a total research junkie. I love digging through archives of scientific journals and finding nuggets of cool research to share with you. Anyways, what led me to understand the power of body language was actually a study from Harvard Business School. Researchers at Harvard Business School wanted to know if body language alone could make a difference in getting someone hired. So they had participants come into a lab and split them up into two groups. In one group, they had them do successful body language, which we're going to talk about a little bit later in the course. And they had them do these poses for five minutes. In the other group, they had them do unsuccessful body language or defeated body language poses, again, for five minutes. They then had these groups go into mock interviews where they had to deliver speeches to evaluators and answer questions. These were videotaped and rated for overall performance, hireability, and presentation quality. Can you believe that the group that stood in the power poses were rated higher for their speech and were more likely to be hired? Just standing in successful body language for five minutes before a pitch can affect the outcome of your sale. Body language is truly amazing. This study is so powerful because it shows us that how we say something is just as important as what we say, and that mastering your body language can help you increase your influence, your impact, and your bottom line. I believe everyone can master body language, whether it comes naturally or not. What's holding people back is bad body language, and this is my fourth pillar. Bad body language can hurt your business, before learning body language, I had no idea that my body language was holding me back. It was holding me back both externally, giving good first impressions, and internally, because I had so much anxiety about what I should be doing with my body and what people were thinking of me. Before I learned body language, I didn't realize that my powerful words were being undercut by my weak body language, and that clients wanted to trust me but my way of interacting was actually harming my attempts to bond with them. Networking, elevator pitches, business lunches, cold calling, ugh, those words used to make me break out in a cold sweat. But you have to have confident body language in those business activities. If not, it can cost you profits. In 2011, corporate fraud cost us $997 billion in the United States alone, which is 7% of total annual revenue. Not understanding body language can not only hold you back from getting new business, but it can also cause you to miss other people's dishonest cues. And small business owners get duped the most. If you can't read body language, you run the risk of not catching dishonest people on your team, or worst of all, missing dishonest customers and clients. 
You need to be able to protect your business from dishonest people by spotting lies and suspicious body language right away. And that's what this course is all about, protecting your business by knowing which nonverbal to avoid and using the right body language to attract the people you want. In the next videos, I'm gonna show you how.